All right, ladies and gentlemen, Bad News Sports Center, Jonathan Stadler working the lines. Stillwater Ponies heading right to left. White Bear in their white sweaters heading left to right. Uh, yeah, technically, I think that should have been your call. This night we talked about not uh, take calls away from our partners. Anyway, here we go. We got one nothing uh, visiting team. Okay, things we're gonna key in on here. Oh, we got a whistle. Offside. All right, this is this is one you did not blow that offside. Therefore, you go fetch. You know, he's giving you that's two now. Remember when we were talking about that? He blew the offside. Just like, uh, make it simple. Just like in the two-man system, you go fetch part pucks for your partner's calls. And in the one-two system, where your partner makes a call, you fetch the puck for him, unless it's in the end zone. Technically, by the book, we should fetch. And then, uh, yeah, any that, any that our partners blow, we go get. So really, the only pucks that you will not fetch yourself if you initiate an ice or you call an offside. You will fetch every other single puck. Anyway, we were going to focus on, like I said, reading play. Reading partners. Reacting accordingly. This system, 2-1 system, a lot of guys don't like it. I, uh, I'd rank the systems this way. Four officials the best, but not for development. One two is the next best if you got a guy who can skate. Two one is a close second, close third, almost tied for second. Two man's last. Two man works as well though. Uh, if you got a high, you got a good game, good PBAA, maybe a good Bantam B, B two maybe I don't know. Anyway, here we go. But that long convoluted uh, description is, okay, get out of there, brother. Go pick a line. Okay, pick one line or the other, whether it's right or wrong. Hopefully it's right. Don't hang out in no man's land. All right. Um, let's finish my long convoluted uh, thought here. My long convoluted thought finishes up with 2-1 works well if you got guys who work well. Meaning guys who can read and react to each other. All things should be covered the best way possible. It's not ideal. There's always moments in the 2-1 that are not ideal just based on what's going on and where the position of the guys are. There's more moments that are not ideal in the 2-1 than there are in the 1-2. Unless you got a bad skating referee. Alright, rush the attacking line. Determining edge. Swash out. So, and we got a goal. Pity hop hooray. Now, if this is a boys game, I certainly hope you would get there in between the reds and the whites. A little bit more obnoxious about being a rodeo clown. Keeping that bull away from your bull rider. Making sure everything's cool and calm out there. You ever been to a rodeo? I was fortunate enough to go to the Cody Night Stampede in Cody, Wyoming. One of the famous rodeos of the West. And those bull riders are damn good. And the 
rodeo clowns are damn good too and quite entertaining at the same time All right, penalty on red holding look like Check this puck drop and hey, let him play. All right, puck goes down. Pause. All right, not on your wall. Find a scene. Now it's on your wall. Good patience. No need to force your way through there. Get to the line. Also, gonna pay attention on my end zone faceoffs you drop. Starting now. So that was one. You're gonna find out you drop a lot of end zone faceoffs. So, being proficient at the end zone faceoff where puck goes down, pause, peel out of there, ideally backwards. If play stays in the zone, you're facing play. Getting on those edges, ripping good C cuts, cross under. Bada bang, bada boom. Here you are. There's the play. Here it comes. No, it doesn't. comes good call at the line clear that puck honey there you go Here they come, ba ba bum, clean as a whistle there. I would certainly call that a strength issue, not a takedown issue. We don't penalize size, strength, and speed. It's three rip. Did I say that? Yeah, they scored two. Here's the end zone face off. Looking at face-offs, uh, one reason I want to make the point again, you would think, okay, we got three zones, two of the three are end zones, so I, hey, wouldn't you think two-thirds of all your puck drops are going to be in end zones? I've actually geeked out and charted it, and uh, three-fourths of them are in end zones. Another end zone face-off. Majority of the stoppages in a game are goalie freezing the puck. Offside, didn't keep it at the line. Okay, there. You blew that offside. The ref slash line will get the puck for you. Oh, the referees there did not do the face-off mechanics the way they should have. Kaz should have stayed on the bench side. Todd should have just handed it off to you and backed up to where he is right now. They ran that face-off mechanic like it was the 2-2. Where a referee on the puck drop side always runs neutral zone face-off. Line changes. 
just a little note for when it comes to refereeing in the 2 1. Last thing we want a guy thinking about, it's not the end of the world, but last thing we want a guy thinking about all the time is where the fuck am I supposed to stand? What well, I'm focusing on the play. Players. Three P's. Well, obviously the cameraman likes this tune. It's another end zone faceoff, by the way. So what, since we've been keeping track, we've had three end zone faceoffs and one neutral zone. We've obviously had three at center ice. Start of the period, two goals. said it yet but obviously each time you watch yourself on video be your own self critique your own self judge you say is that really how I thought I was saying is that really what mechanics were is that really how I skate so the picture in uh, everybody's mind of what they're doing and uh, what the reality is that video shows maybe two different things so that video is the best tool myself after X number of years of officiating and, uh, and then let's just say not being videotaped or not being on TV for a while and then seeing myself again on TV I'm like holy moly that's how I'm my mannerisms they've changed I gotta get back on track here I gotta make adjustment appearance is so key I think you know how you received how, how you're perceived even when it comes to All right what it wants you to sprint a little harder there oh, we've got another hold so you were trailing guy sprint to that far blue okay those are something that can be picked up and will eventually be placed in the attitude and confidence category where if they see a guy out there sprint psh, locks up the brakes look sharp boom boom here sprint here sprint there they're like damn this guy's into it he's not mailing it in tonight get on your side there sweet cheeks so uh that's why i'd want you to do that you know if you get noticed for the right reasons that goes a long way And for me, it's gone a long way for my career. Wouldn't say I was the best, wouldn't say I was the fastest, wouldn't say I had the best penalty selection, but tell you what, ain't nobody gonna outwork me. Oh, and they get on the board. Fire up the school song, band. Now, once it clears up, boom, sprint to one of those lines.
Okay, even that move there. You got to the line, no problems. Everything you know, is good enough, but how about a little sprint? A couple, one, maybe two more harder strides. Lock up the brakes when you're there. Nice controlled stop. Maybe make some snow fly. Those are the things that look sharp. Coming in there. Whew. Johnny on the spot, baby. I know this is girls varsity hockey, but I'm working this like we got uh, orange and white Philadelphia Flyers against uh, Chicago Blackhawks. Okay, bring the game up one level. Putting the switch permanently in the on position so when it comes time to turn it on, I don't got to think about it. It's automatically on. It's been left on, people. And that kind of thing is what instills confidence in all participants involved. Your partners. Yeah, that's good hustle there. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Sprint from line to line. Um, stalls confidence in your partners, uh, coaches, players, fans, owners, GMs, TV, supervisors, board members. As the slogan goes for the ODP this season without the little things there are no big things No, end zone face off. I haven't been keeping track of. We had a center ice face off, obviously due to a goal. Another end zone. Puck goes down. Boom. C cut. C cut. Glide. 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 C cut. C cut. Give me some rips. It's kind of a summer ho hockey mentality we got rolling here. I always say uh, summer hockey. Uh, work as hard as you have to. Winter hockey, when you're in the real season, pour the coals to it. Alright, that was a piss poor pass followed by a piss poor giveaway. Here comes another end zone face off. Right directly in front of us, maybe. Alright, let's put a let's put a bow on this present here. Puck goes down. There, now it's pause. Rip out of there, brother. You had a lane. Okay, a little bit more zip. A little bit more jam, a little bit more oomph. It's going to go a long way for you. Uh, overall, nice job. Work on those little things, though. Guys, uh, don't pay enough attention to little things, and they make all the difference in the world, my friend. Once you get to this level and higher, little things are all the difference. There, we got a penalty. We're out of here.